I won't be able to find you soon. Me neither. No choice then. None. In unison, they smiled. It's time. For something Sarah suspected might be a couple of days expired, the bagel didn't actually taste so bad. No, the bad taste in her mouth was likely being caused by her present situation. It was Halloween, and she was stuck at home. Her father was working late. Her brother was out, actually celebrating with his friends, and where was she? At home, alone, watching mediocre horror flicks and eating strangely edible expired snacks. Fucking perfect, she thought. Outside, the darkness seemed heavy, but vivid somehow, as if the night itself was excited. Every now and then, the silence was broken by a squeal of laughter, a sudden giggle, the excited shattering of a costumed kid running around, eating as much candy as the houses could spew up. Every one of these giggles made Sarah's scowl deepen more and more. It wasn't just the fact that she was doing absolutely nothing this Halloween, it also happened to be the very last thing she needed. In all the years prior, Sarah had always done something for Halloween. She was dressed up, met with her friends, found out with her family, something! This year, however, she had to move away from her previous home and friends into a new school during her senior year in an area of Ontario with which she was completely unfamiliar. She hated her new school. She had no close friends, her teachers were either incompetent or cruel or both, and now she was spending Halloween without a trace of Halloween fun. There wasn't even anything worthwhile on TV. Outside, Sarah heard another squeal of laughter, followed by the sound of her doorbell ringing. She sighed and rolled off her bed, dragged herself down the stairs, and paused at the bottom to try and rework her facial expression into something less caustic. She had been expecting some trick-or-treaters. Once she was reasonably sure she managed her best evil smile, Sarah turned the corner and approached her door. Through the large pane of glass to the left of her front door, she could see that there was indeed someone outside. She couldn't make out any features. Whoever it was, this person was sort of tall for a trick-or-treater. Hmm. Maybe they're twelve-year-olds or something, she thought. Sarah slowly opened the door for dramatic effect. She was about to try a deep, evil voice when she saw that there was no one there. In fact, she noticed that when there were kids further down the street, they were dead immediately in front of her house. Or were the neighboring ones? A sudden gust of wind blew through her hair, across her face, and she shivered. After a moment, she just shrugged. God damn ding dong bitchers. She made her way past the stairs, down the hallway, to the kitchen. After flipping on the light, she placed the bowl of candy her dad had left for trick-or-treaters down on the counter, so she apparently wouldn't be needing it. Then she opened the fridge door and looked around at all the shelves. There had to be something good. Sarah closed the door again, debating whether or not she should make herself a sandwich, when something through the window caught her eye. It looked as though the darkness outside had been replaced by something darker in the middle. She turned towards the window. It was the same shadowy figures from as before staring right at her through the kitchen window. Sarah screamed and fell back. Immediately she looked up at the window again, and she found there was nothing there. She could clearly make out the cheesy glowing skeletons that decorated the side of her neighbor's house. Had she imagined it? Oh no, I am not going to be the stupid girl at a Halloween movie, horror movie, whatever. Not tonight. Sarah fished her cell phone out of her pocket, went to her contacts list, and scrolled down until she found Dad. She pressed the call button and waited. Between the third and fourth wing, he picked up. Hello? Dad, get home now. There's someone stalking around the house. Whoever it is, he keeps looking in through all the windows. I'm sure it's not a trick-or-treater. I'm already on the way home, came the response from the speaker. I'll be there in five minutes. Stay away from the windows. All right, I'll see you then, Sarah finished. She quickly exited the kitchen and headed up the stairs. She wasn't particularly worried about her dad when, when he got back. He was a big guy. People would think twice about trying to take him on. Feeling more relaxed now that she wouldn't be alone much longer, Sarah made her way down the hallway and pushed her slightly ajar bedroom door fully open. Someone was standing in the middle of her room, shrouded in shadows. She shrieked and slammed the door closed. He, he was just outside. How'd he get in my house? She flew down the stairs, completely terrified now. <laughs> She turned the corner again to make for her front door, but she stopped dead in her tracks as she saw the same figure from the window, standing still as stone, its outline clearly visible to the glass pane. 
Sarah's heart felt like it might burst out of her chest. Her breaths were coming short and quick, leaving her feeling like she was getting no oxygen at all. She whirled around, ran back up the stairs. She was on the second step when she nearly ran right into the other one at the top of the stairs, a statue in the darkness. She choked on her scream as the figure extended one long, bony hand and tightly gripped her neck. His, its, face was still shrouded in shadow, but it had inhuman strength. She, bar she just barely had enough time to think. How does it move so fast? Before the thing at all, all at once relinquished its grip and let her fall back down to the stairs. Sarah practically rolled down them, smashing her knee into the edge of a stair and nearly breaking her neck several times. She just lay there at the bottom of the flight. Everything hurt. Her knee was on fire. She just wanted to lie there and cry. The sound of dry, ragged laughing from the top of the stairs snapped her out of it. When freaking crying in pain, Sarah forced herself to stand and limped down the hall. She had to get away. Her father would be home any second. The only place left to go was the bathroom. Sarah limped into it, slammed the door shut behind her, and locked it. For a single sickening moment, there was silence. Then, as Sarah's hand still rested on the breast knob, it ever slowly turned. Sarah muffled her scream with one hand and slowly backed away, letting herself fall back and curling up against the bathtub. The knob turned gently at first, then more insistently, vigorously. Strangely, though, it didn't become violent. It seemed more coaxing, beguiling. Sarah was so petrified, her eyes so transfixed on the doorknob, it was a minute before she noticed the figure in the mirror, smiling. Sarah didn't even scream. The moment she laid her eyes on it, it seemed to call her. But she realized what, was, what she was doing, Sarah was standing up. Slowly, against her entire will, she put one foot forward, then the next. There was no stopping. Her body was no longer her own. Stop moving, please, stop. She was facing the mirror. Her eyes stared into the smile. Lifeless enjoyed this, and she wanted to scream and run. Instead, she slowly raised an arm. Fingers started to do the same. She was screaming at her body, demanding, imploring, begging that it stop, but in vain. Her hand came to rest upon the silvery surface. The figures did the same, resting upon the same spot where Sarah's hand was. Sarah felt a biting cold upon her palm. The room seemed to start spinning. Her vision blurred. No. No, no. I can't. I can't let myself. The last thing Sarah heard before losing consciousness was the gentle click of the bathroom door opening. Pain in her head, in her ankles, in her knee. Sarah felt the pain all over. She opened her eyes and found that she wasn't in her room. There was a window below her, lights on the floor. It took Sarah a moment to understand. She was upside down. For a moment, she was puzzled. Why am I? Oh, God. Those things. What happened? Where, where am I? Sarah looked up and saw that the pain in her ankles was coming from the chains that bound her. She twisted and thrashed, trying desperately to free herself. But the chains didn't relent. She was stuck. She looked around, expecting to see hell itself for all she knew. The space itself looked to be about seven by seven meters. A single dim light bulb on the ceiling cast a pitiful amount of light. There were dirty walls with cracked, faded paint. The floor was rough stone. In one corner, there was a small room, the doorway covered with an old plastic curtain. The single window was located almost at the junction between the wall and ceiling. A basement. Sarah felt herself starting to hyperventilate again. S someone she screamed hoarsely, someone help me. She listened for a moment, but heard only the cacophony of crickets in reply. Please, please, anyone help me. She screamed as loud as she could. Please, no one will hear you. Please, don't be so noisy. Sarah immediately stopped. Her eyes wide with terror, she turned her head to see the figure in the darkness, standing near the corner where the room was. I, I promise, I don't want to cause you pain. Please, stop screaming. The thing spoke in a dry, stained, yet soft voice, somewhat like the faint wind outside. Well, why am I here? Sarah whimpered. The thing tilted its head to one side, as if considering the question. It's actually quite simple. I want to see a dear friend. My sister, actually. You are here to help me. 
Sarah instantly remembered the figure in the window and the mirror. F friend What friend? You should know. You've seen her. The thing's left hand was incessantly opening and closing, its long, bony fingers writhing, and as though it could barely contain itself. This thing wasn't human. It couldn't be. What are you? Sarah screamed at the thing. For a moment, it didn't react. Then it simply stepped forward into the light, making itself visible. Sarah choked on vomit, which clogged another scream. It had the frame of a human, but otherwise it was anything but. It looked like it had some, at some point been a teenage boy, but he was bald and his skin was taut, veinless and translucent. Sarah could see into his flesh, and underneath the lifeless covering he looked like a corpse in the process of decay. In some hearts, he seemed to have nothing but bone beneath the skin, while in others there seemed to be only flesh. His right arm hung limply at his side, apparently devoid of bone. He looked like random chunks had been torn out of him, and the rest had been mixed up inside of him. Like some grizzly living stew. He was wearing an old, torn, black t-shirt and jeans of the same color. In some parts, though, the fabric seemed to be under his skin, fused with it. What? What the fuck? It was all she could say. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Pleased to meet you, the thing responded. I had a name once, but it doesn't matter now. You won't know it very long anyway. You, you sick thing! Somebody help! Sarah couldn't help it. This living swirl of gore telling her these things just made her snap. She had to call for help. She had to get away right then. Please help! The thing sighed and put his hand into his pocket, pulling out a set of pliers. I asked you to be quiet. He took a hold of the side of Sarah's mouth, put the pliers around one of her front teeth, and slowly pulled, but with tremendous force. Sarah's screams for help became cries of pain. She could feel the root of her tooth shearing her gum. With the wet tearing sound, the tooth came free. Sarah's mouth filled with blood. The pain was excruciating. You sick fuck! Oh, you sick, sick fuck! She kept screaming. Again, the thing sighed, and with the pliers, it pulled another tooth, a molar this time. Sarah shrieked in agony as this one too came free. Blood flowed from her mouth down onto her hair. Now will you please be quiet? The thing asked, sounding more sad than angry. Sarah could only sob in response. The pain was too much. The thing continued. I really didn't want to have to do that, but I detest the scout of screaming. I'm not into torture or terror or any of that. I just want to see my dear sister. He began circling Sarah's dangling body as he talked, sounding increasingly pain. I'm sorry. I truly am. This is the only way for me. You can see her. Everyone can see her. But I can't. You see, my sister doesn't exactly exist in this plane. She can manifest reflective surfaces, though. You can see her in any of them. But me? I can't. Mirrors are useless. Glass, marble, water. Nothing works. I used to think I'd never see her again until I discovered it. The thing stopped circling Sarah for a moment and walked to the other room in the corner. Sarah watched him with raw horror, still whimpering and crying in pain. He returned with an object in his hand. He lifted it up to a little scalpel, like it glinting in the poor light, the one surface that works. Despite the pain in his voice, he smiled. It was a wicked smile, full of animalistic desire. I'd never see my reflection. My sister and my reflection, in most reflective services, raised the scalpel, but in the right light, blood can be very reflective indeed. Sarah's scream was, was cut off as the scalpel flashed to the side. It became a gurgle as blood gushed from her open throat, down her face, and into her mouth. Though her eyes running in rivers into her hair, and finally pulling beneath her on the floor. The thing watched eagerly as a large puddle of blood formed underneath Sarah, who was still choking and gurgling. He knelt in front of the puddle and gazed intensely. For a moment, nothing seemed to happen. You found me. Slowly the thing's reflection morphed and blurred into something similar. That was patches of long black hair instead of a bald head. He smiled at her, swelling with jubilation. Yes! Yes! I found you again! She smiled back. I missed you so much. I missed you too. But you see, we found a way. 
but we will always find a way. Our teamwork was perfect, as usual. For several minutes, they just looked into each other's eyes, elated, overjoyed. Her smile faded, but, you know, this never lasts long. His own smile vanished. I... I know. I won't be able to find you soon. Me neither. No choice, then. None. In unison, they smiled. It's time. They slowly stood up, walked past the body, still feebly spewing blood, over to a door in the opposite corner. I love you, sister, he called. I love you, too. I'll see you again, just as soon as you find another one. The light went out, the door creaked, and then slammed shut just as quickly. Sarah's hearing was all but gone. She was barely conscious. Now she just wanted it to end, and soon it would. Sarah's consciousness was all but gone for the last time. She heard a slight chuckle directly beneath her. You should have been more careful with reflective surfaces, dearie, came the female voice. No telling what you might see in them.